Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and as you can see, I'm in a magical place. This is Weta Workshop, where artists, sculptors, fabricators, painters make the practical special effects that you see in so many of the films that we love. Adam and I are here this week to meet some of these fabricators, and while Adam spends a couple days working on a few special projects, I'm gonna chat with some of these artists. First up, silicone prosthetics. Kim, it's so great for you to have us here. Thank you. It's so nice to meet you. Um, I want to talk about silicon. You are in charge of your work as a technician here, working with silicon. And that's interesting because a lot of the creature effects artists we've met work with all materials. Why is silicon so, so special? Oh, silicon's a most amazing product. And it's just, there are so many different types of silicon on the market. It's crazy. Uh, we've got lots of platinum cures as well as tin cures. So predominantly in prosthetics, you're using platinum cure silicon. Because of that, it's susceptible to getting contaminated and not working. And then you'll run a little piece at home and you'll have a big gooey spot in the middle of the nose. Of and so it's all about having an amazingly clean, sterile environment. And I just found that it was something I could do. And we've done quite a lot of jobs here at Weta Workshop that are huge prosthetics, mass numbers, you know, hundreds of noses going out. Every single one has to be exactly the same. Well, in terms of the, yeah. that, like, prosthetics for, yeah. for film, you know, uh, back then there was foam latex and, and Foam now... and gelatin, mm -hmm. yeah, with the normal gelatin on the cheaper, cheaper side to get mass amounts out. Um, you know, foam latex fantastic but of course foam is opaque so it looks dead on camera it doesn't look as lifelike so whereas with the silicon we can match exactly to your skin tone I can go and look at the lighter shade of your skin which basic test that we do here is we push down on the skin mm -hmm. and we look how white it is also my tone's got quite a lot of yellow to it even a or green tone um, and that's the base color. And that's color. the base color. And then we allow the makeup artists or the painters, a lot of prosthetics are pre-painted in-house, then travel to set um, where the makeup artist applies the piece and then goes in and colors it, adding veins and pimples and uh -huh. whatever else, um, hairs, you know, we can have some lovely big hairs coming out. So the starting of the process really comes down to a sculpture being done. Well going back from that is a life cast. Right. So that's the other thing that I do is um, at Weta Workshop with Jason Doherty is all the life casting. So be it hands, feet, ears, faces, body casts. You've got a life cast of an actor. Life cast of an actor. And then you sculpt on top of And then we that. sculpt onto it. Yeah. So basically from that we take we take a mold off the life cast, mm -hmm. getting ourselves what we call a snap, which is usually a part of the face. So if we just want the nose, we'll just have a small section that goes through to the sculpting department where they will match an illustration of what they want. Um, sculpting us a awesome nose like this one. Mm -hmm. um, and getting right, you know, getting all the detail in there, all the hair pores, the wrinkles, if it's got warts. And then from that stage, we mold it. Uh, we predominantly use an epoxy molding system. Um, and it is a very lightweight mold which makes it easy for someone like myself to have to get it closed because you get a massive amount of hydraulic pressure with silicon mm -hmm. in fact i wish i had a mold here to show you guys because i have to stand on the molds so to get all the faces closed i actually put them down on the, and pour them on the ground put the second part of the mold in and then i actually get up and use all of my you know not much weight <laughs> pushing it down and then strap the molds closed we've had um huge chest molds um which are also encapsulated which means that it's in a barrier of of um vinyl so with those molds you've already sprayed the mold with your super baldies mm -hmm. um both sides silicon gets poured in and the mold closed to get it tight so we get these beautiful clean edges which will just melt away with iso um we need to sometimes even grab out big drums of silicon one of the chests we did we used I mean, 20 kilo pails so we did six pails of silicon sitting on top of the mold after we'd completely strapped it down to keep that pressure on and then you mentioned just the part the casting of silicone is a very precise process and it can is even it, change it, well, day to day, week day to week? day 
humidity, humidity, temperature affects absolutely everything. So How do you keep it consistent? We are really lucky here that um, a lot of money has been invested into our silicon. This is our platinum silicon room mm. and we keep it at 23 degrees. Um, I can feel it. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do get really warm in here as well. Um, we have great extraction systems for doing all our spraying and it's just about the hardest thing is actually finding crew that can continue to be really pedantic mm. about what you're doing. Every mould has to be cleaned perfectly with alcohol. Um, everything's sprayed to the same thickness. We get makeup artists who love their uh, the vinyl to be really thin um, and if we're transporting things from New Zealand to Vancouver or India um, and we have an artist who wants them really thin we've got to make sure the prosthetic lasts yeah. as well that it stays on uh, we store them on a foam a foam buck um, which works really well pinning the, pinning them down so it's pretty durable by the time we've actually usually would glue this into a box for transport and you liken that process almost to like cooking where do you, do you have recipes yeah. like notebooks I so, so do my folders are all oh. down under there and everything is documented because working in the film industry as everyone knows you make a movie and you make hundreds of somethings and before you know it you've jumped onto n another film yeah. and then you've gone from that film and your brain kind of goes yep forgotten that because I'm totally focusing on greens and blues or whatever's happening if it's a creature and then they want to do pickups or then they're doing advertising or a camera crew turns up and they want something so you've got to be able to go back and get that information and tinting the silicon as spoke about mm -hmm. before with the skin color is down to calculations that are point zero 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 one six four this sort of thing where you actually work out your volume of silicon that you're using the other thing is the the deadener that mm -hmm. we use this is um platinum double zero and this silicon has um this piece here is at 50 percent deadener which is the softness so depending on the piece depends on how soft if we're doing faces we tend to run them around 65 percent we tend to have them lovely and soft we can go to 200 percent but then mm -hmm. you're sort of looking at something that's pretty young um, and all that affects pretty. how the prosthetic wears on the actor the base tint how it matches how the makeup artist can then match it to their skin or whatever application exactly. they're doing yeah and you had years of experience to to get it to, to, to get it to this point and you know, we are very much reliant on what particular makeup artists want mm. on set as well. Um, as the technicians in the lab, we have to do what we think's right, and then if they want something slightly harder, slightly softer, that's fine, we can do that, and that also adjusts the amount of tint I put in as well. Yeah. So then I have to do whole new calculations to work out. And of course, if you've got 100 noses going out that are all the same color, you've got to make sure every single one goes out. Wow. For country it truly is so a hugely collaborative process and so much expertise i just thought you just mix just mix a some goo well no? that's what i tell everyone it's like what do you do oh, i mix the goo you know yeah mix with, the goo. with the recipes yeah. with the yeah, right recipes exactly with the right recipes and every single mold is a challenge um every single mold will have its own little thing that needs to be done yeah. differently um, time frames are pretty much the same. You've got around eight minutes with double zero to have your mold closed. So from the moment I've coloured it, mixed it, and I use a degasser to take the bubbles out of it, pull that mold, get that mold shut, I've got eight minutes. Um, and that's what I've found working in this particular temperature. Of course, other people will be working in a colder environment, you've got more time. If you're in LA and you're in the stinking heat, Chances are you're trying to jam that all into probably about five minutes. Wow. I'll never look at a dwarf nose the same way again. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kim, That's for cool. sharing with us. It's so nice to meet awesome. you. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you.